Hello everyone and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. My name is Mark and today we're at a beautiful location in my hometown. We're looking at a castle where many people got married, including me. But we're here for a reason. We are going to build a bat detector. That's right, we are going to hunt for bats. So let's go back to the workshop and get started. Although bats are not blind, they use more than their eyes to see the whereabouts and to see what's ahead of them. Even with the eyes shut, the bat would still detect the ball in front of him. It does so by sending out sound bursts. The sound burst will reflect on the object in front of the bat and the bat will hear it with his ears. This is also known as echolocation. Of course, this is bad news to any insects that are about to become dinner. The echo sounds the bat creates are not detectable by the human ear because it's frequency range above 30 kilohertz and we cannot detect it. So in order to detect it, we need to do a little trick. We are going to build a heterodyne receiver to shift the frequency range down to the range that we can hear. So the way a hydrodyne receiver works is that we are going to add an extra frequency that we got from our oscillator. And the oscillator will be tuned to the frequency we want to listen to. Now the hydrodyne principle is that in a mixer both the input signal from the microphone and our oscillator frequency are mixed together. And as a result several new frequencies are created. And one of those is the summation of both. Another set that is the one we are going to use is the difference between the oscillator frequency and the input frequency. Now first what we do is after uh, we amplify the input signal we are going to send it to a high pass filter of approximately 20 kilohertz which filters out all the audio frequencies. Now in a mixer several sets of frequencies are generated and we're only interested in the one I just mentioned so we basically need to filter out all the other sets. But because of the specifications of our amplifier there's no need to actually put in a filter because we're just using the op amp bandwidth limitation to do it for us. So the schematic is drawn as uh, blocks that are connected and I'm going to explain each block. I will start with the oscillator. The oscillator is built with an op amp and with the current power supply you can generate frequencies up to 300 kilohertz. Our input amplifier is made of two stages and it also includes a high pass filter using C8 and C9. You can use R7 to adjust the amplification. Next is our mixer. Uh, I use an op amp for that as well. And we have our main amplifier. And you can choose not to use a main amplifier and work with a headset only. That of course is totally up to you. Before I start assembling my PCB, I put all the components on a single sheet, um, sort them with a rest designator and a value, so it's easy to pick and place, so I can just place all the components on the PCB and then solder it later. This is the PCB you'll need. Of course, we need a speaker, or you can use your headset. We need an ultrasonic microphone, and I actually bought several types, so we can try which one works best once we're testing in the field. You need a battery. And a battery clip and of course you need a housing or a case. One component I should point out is this little adapter. Basically what it is it's an adapter that you can solder and integrate a circuit in an SO package and fit it into a, a through hole dill, a footprint. The reason for that is that I found that nowadays with the component shortage I also run into the problem where the specific amplifier I'm using is hard to get. I know the stocks are tremendous, probably at your local distributor you can find it, but if not you can use this little adapter. I'll put it in the part list for you to see. Now let's start assembling. For that I created a little tool a very long time ago and I still use it today. And hold my PCB and I can just start assembling all the components. And of course I'll start with the resistors one by one. So here we go, R1. Now it's easy to solve your result. Now pay attention to what I'm doing. I'm bending the wires and wait a minute. Before you're saying hey that's not the way to go, I know. Right? Because if you have to do some soldiering work on a professional level, then they will teach you to um, cut the wires at length first. But that's not the way I like to do it. Since um, this is not for professional use, I can do it the comfortable way. Which means 
I will solder it first, then cut the wire. And I know it will give some extra stress on the wires, but for this application, it's not that important. Let me start by soldering these resistors before I put on the other components. So I'm going to make some, some noise, which is from the soldering station. And once that is done, I can start cutting the wires. Again, if you're soldering on a professional level, you want to cut the wires first and then apply the soldering because that reduces stress on the components. But since we're not building for NASA, it doesn't really matter, does it? Now we can start adding some more components. So next we're going to do the capacitors and we'll start with uh, C1. This is C5. Make sure you got the polarity right, otherwise it will only work for a very short time, I'm sure. And this is what happens if you don't pay attention. I soldiered it the wrong way and C4 now becomes indeed a different kind of C4 if I were to plug it in. So let me just correct that and we're also going to add the potentiometers. We got one for the frequency and we got one for the volume. And of course we have the sockets because we're going to use sockets for the integrated circuits so that way it's easier to exchange them in case we break them or if we want to change uh, the op-amps to try different types, with those in there, and we're going to solder those one leg first, so it won't fall out, under the little uh, socket of the 8 pin uh, little socket, there's a little jumper, and it's set to a default, if you want to change it, take a look at the schematic and see what it does, we still have a few components, basically it's two and the capacitor that I failed to install earlier, but let's start with the easy part. So the switch is going here. And we have the socket for the headset, which goes right here. We still need to mount the LED, which goes right there, but I will do that later when the PCB is placed in the housing so I can estimate the distance. Don't forget to place in your integrated circuits and make sure you got the orientation right. And basically, that's all there is to it. Do you like free stuff? You can join the Road Test program. You can get free dev kits, test equipment, and even online training courses. In exchange for a detailed review, join our Road Test program. Learn more at the link below. Ah, free stuff? With the PCB assembled, we only have a few components uh, to put together for our bat detector to be completed. Of course we have the PCB, it's designed to fit exactly in the housing. And all we need to do is cut away a little plastic for the audio jack. We'll need to make some holes or place a connector for the speaker. And I'm probably going to place a little connector so I can swap out the microphone for different types so I can find what microphone gives the best result. Of course we have a battery and a battery clip, uh, we will have the little LED in place there. The speaker we're going to place right there. I probably have to rewire the LED to the side. So I already put on some markings on the, on the housing where I want the holes. So we're just going to do it quick and dirty. And basically, basically this is how it's going to fit. We have the pop meters on top, one for volume and one for frequency. We have the switch on the side, the connection for the speaker. I'm going to uh, make it all nice, take away all the remaining plastic that I don't need, uh, brush it all up a bit, and of course I will make a little uh, indication here for the volume. I'll make a nice, nice design for the front, put it here, and then we're going to wire it up and we're done. Okay, so the assembly is fairly easy. We'll need the battery, of course, the battery clip, some wires, a speaker, and I made a little uh, front which I will uh, include in the files that you can use to place on uh, the cover, like so. And let's start with the microphone, because like I said, I want to test out different microphones. And for that, I need to be able to swap them at the top without taking the device apart. So I mounted a little piece of uh, PCB connectors. I just broke out a string of five and I'm going to connect it to this one because to the headers I will just attach the microphones and then it's easy for me to swap them out while I don't have to take apart 
the whole machine. Since this is a prototype, I also might want to have to adjust the amplification of the first amplifier and I can use that potentiometer. And to make it easy to access it from the outside, I drill an extra hole and I will just uh, drill the hole to the cover later. Once you tested the right microphone, it doesn't really matter. You can just do an adjustment once and you never need to change it again. So in that case, you don't need to uh, drill the, ho the hole on the outside. For me, it was convenient. So again, this will be here. But first, let's start the wiring. So this is going to be for the microphone. For that, we need two wires. The PCB has headers. Uh, or it has place for headers if you want to use them. I decided not to, but it's there. If you, if you have them around, you can uh, install it for sure. Then we will do the speaker. First, I apply a little glue to the speaker and just use any general glue. It's not that critical because the speaker edge or the gasket on the speaker is made of paper. Now, the speaker has a polarity as well. So I'm going to use a red wire for the plus and the white brown yellow for the minus of course you can use any colors you like it's totally up to you now all there is left for us to connect is the battery clip and that's all there is to it now when you close it up and you're good to go and we're back at the castle and behind me just above the water there are like uh, three or four bats uh, hunting and up in the air there are many bats and they're all hunting for insects so it should be a good time to detect them so let's turn on the detector we point them towards the bats and we slowly start changing the frequency until we have a hit And that's all there is to it. Happy hunting! So that's all I got for you today. Remember, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them at the Element 14 community and I will do my best to answer all of them. And for now, I wish you happy hunting!